So in last week's lesson of Come Follow Me, we were fully in this story of Saul. Now in 2 Samuel chapter 1, Saul and, Dave, uh, Saul and Jonathan, his son, are both killed, along with others in his family and in his kingdom, they're killed, which then leaves his one of his sons named Ish-bosheth, who then tries to take the throne of his father, but he hasn't been anointed by the prophet to be the king, but Ishbosheth is going to surround himself with people who will uphold him to give him the power even though it hasn't been given to him by God. Interesting, that's exactly what Lucifer did, and that's what people throughout time in the Book of Mormon and in other scriptures do when they turn away from God, they're, they're seeking power, they're seeking the glory, the riches, the honor of the world. Isn't that an interesting symbolic overlay for Lucifer, ultimately, what he tried to do was to take all of this glory for himself to ascend above everybody else, whereas you think about what God does and he wants to share his power, share his glory, his dominion with us, and yet sometimes we're not interested because we'd rather just have more than everybody around us. It's a fascinating little uh, overlay as we move forward. Meanwhile, down south in, in the southern part of the, the United Kingdom of Israel, David has the tribe of Judah who is coming to him and he's the anointed king. So up north you have people converging and gathering around Ishbosheth, and down south around King David, and for two years there's this conflict in the first part of 2 Samuel. But eventually David, the anointed of the Lord, rises to power and over, over those two years finally um, overthrows Ishbosheth, and David unifies all of the, the tribes under his monarchical reign. And one of the reasons why the later editors who are looking back and trying to explain to us what's going on in Israelite history, why one of the reasons they show that David is such a significant person in Israelite history is that he's the first to really fulfill the grand vision of occupying and owning and having the land. So we know that Joshua is supposed to come in, there's supposed to be this conquest, and if you look carefully at Joshua and Judges, it doesn't fully happen. So it's really under David and then under Solomon, we have a full flourishing of the promises that God made to Abraham of giving the land and then getting the people out of Egypt, you know, years after Abraham, and bringing the Israelites in. So now we're looking at 800 years of anticipation from Abraham to get to a point where the land is now safe and secure. Now, I'm slightly getting ahead of myself because I'm talking about what happens at the time of Solomon, but it's really David who secures the peace of Israel, and that's why he's seen as this beloved king, and his name in Hebrew means beloved, and then his son Solomon reigns in peace after all the enemies have been defeated, and that comes from the Hebrew word shalom, or Solomon means shalom, which means peace.